Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Sony A6600. I've spent a few days with this camera, and I can happily tell you that I am really enjoying it. Even though we didn't get a new sensor, which I know many of you were hoping for, myself included, we did get updates in pretty much every other realm. Yes, we didn't get a higher res EVF. We did get the flip around LCD. We did get no recording limit on board with 4K video. We now have improved autofocus, improved bat battery life with the Z-Type battery. That's double the battery life uh, that we had experienced for God knows how many years in APS-C bodies from Sony with the W-Series battery. Uh, we did not get Type-C connectivity, which I would have liked to have seen over here on the, uh, the multi-port uh, bay door. We did now finally get both microphone and headphone jacks. So I think that's another thing that makes this almost the cream of the crop when it comes to vlogging utility. Uh, we lost a flash, but I can live with that. Um, not all of you will be able to, but this camera has gotten a lot of flack for not having a new sensor. And I understand why, but at the same time, I think it represents real progress in Sony's APS-C lineup. You still have a camera that's much smaller than anything in their full frame lineup that still accommodates older E-mount lenses. Because we didn't push resolution, older lenses are not dated. And if you really want to use new glass, you can certainly use the full frame stuff. Uh, and Sony did launch new uh, glass for this camera, the 16 to 55, which is a great looking lens. I don't have a review sample, but uh, overall, I'm really liking what they did here. Again, the autofocus improvement is huge. Uh, it's not, you know, night and day versus the A6500 that I've been using happily uh, since launch, but it's better. And the fact that we have real-time tracking uh, in the autofocus during video capture recording uh, with eye autofocus, all that good stuff, this really rounds out to be the best APS-C camera on the market right now. So if you're looking for something lightweight, compact, powerful, and yes, it doesn't have 32 or 36 megapixels. Um, it's not setting a new standard in terms of sensors in spite of Sony being the largest uh, sensor manufacturer in the, in the, excuse me, the world, but that's specifically more so a result also of them being inside virtually every phone, specifically iPhones uh, on the market. It's a great camera. So, I mean, between battery life improvement, autofocus improvement, as I mentioned, the addition of uh, new three and a half mil jacks there so that it really rounds out the vlogging experience with this uh, display that does come all the way around for self-framing and all those things. This camera is a step forward. And while it may not revolutionize the space, it modernizes Sony's APS-C footprint. And I have to tell you, over the years of covering their cameras, the last two, I mean, I wasn't sure if they were quitting on this segment. So when they announced the A6600, called it a flagship, and a lot of people got upset. Okay, I get it. I said, no new sensor. The sensor's old. But they updated everything on here other than the EVF and what should be a Type-C port. So I think that's a pretty big update. And by the way, I'm not in love with the placement of this EVF. Anyone who's ever watched any of my reviews from day one to today knows that I'm left eye dominant, and I'm never gonna wanna press my face into this display, but it still is a solid EVF, not best in class. I'll reiterate that over and over again, but 11 frames per second, um, eight in silent mode with autofocus that is better than anything they've ever put forward in an APS-C body. We now have video features that we never had. I mean, I used to talk about overheating like it was in the APS-C lineups DNA. That is a thing of the past. Couple in the extended battery life and the real-time real uh, tracking in video now. This is a different camera. And yeah, you can go get the A6400 without IBIS, but image, you know, the in-body image stabilization, that's huge if you're not using stabilized lens. That's huge uh, lenses. It's huge if you're using any sort of legacy glass, anything vintage, anything from another manufacturer with an adapter. You want in body image stabilization. If you're using a gimbal, get the A6400. That's not a question, but they aren't that far apart in price. This isn't twice the price. I mean, it's, it approaches getting there, but it's not. You're talking about $1,400 for this body. And at least in my experience so far, I have no reason not to recommend the A6600. I think it's got an unfair rap from the uh, DI community. 
And that's because, quite frankly, the DI community has been spoiled by Sony. That's what I'm starting to see here, is that every reviewer out there has become so spoiled with every new release that Sony puts out that they are expecting the world delivered on a silver platter. And for the first time, Sony took deliberate steps to make money and deliver an update that I do think is real. This is a legitimate update. And yet somehow, all anyone can focus on is that the sensor is long on the tooth. And by the way, I'm not excusing that the sensor is old, but in the same vein, Canon, Nikon, those companies, I'm not gonna include Panasonic, uh, if they delivered an update like this, their users would crap their pants. They'd be so delighted. But when Sony does it, burn it down, man, burn it down. That's what I'm getting from the community. I think this is a great, if not the best, APS-C camera ever made. If it had a new sensor, it would only be better, of course. Uh, if we had 4K at 60p, it would only be better. But I have to say, this may become my new favorite camera. Lightweight, still beefy, still compact, still can accommodate both small and large lenses, and image quality is still good. Video has only gotten better. Autofocus has only gotten better. And now battery life is twice what it used to be, so I don't have to carry around uh, 100W batteries. And I can use the same batteries, of course, that I've been using with their full frame lineup for years. This is a bit of a blessing, in my opinion. So to each their own on the A6600, but so far, my experience has been very good. I'm not gonna get into the touch screen today. I'll save that for another video. But those of you that were wondering, waiting, is this worth 1400 US? So far, it absolutely seems like it is. And if you wanna save the money, you can always go to the A6400. And if you wanna save even more money, you can go back in time to the 6500 or the 6300, because that's clearly stating that you really don't care about any of these improvements. Buffer is great. I mean, this is a solid camera, folks. This is a really nice piece of hardware. And yeah, there's no UHS-2 slot, uh, but I think we'll probably get that in the next camera body that's APS-C. I don't think they had to do it here. Uh, it's not really demanding enough to necessarily require it. It would be nice to have on paper, but it would just be on paper if you see what I'm saying. That rounds things out. Again, I can recommend the A6600. Uh, even though we don't have a new sensor, we have a new body. We have a new camera here, folks. And it, it shows in performance both in still and video. And this is what Sony's always done well, giving you the best of both worlds. I think the A6600 delivers on that. And the added ergonomics are a big improvement. I wasn't sure that I was gonna be sold on it, but it's a pleasure to use. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.